Hey and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. In this video we're going to be looking at how to achieve the levitating cup effect. So since I don't have a green screen I had to use um, a plain blank wall as my back plate. Um, if you do have a green screen make sure you use it because it's going to uh, help you out quite a bit. <laughs> um, so yeah there's a few things we do need before we can get started and the first is going to be some string and the second is going to be a way to attach the string to the ceiling. So I've got this little accessory here which came with one of my cameras and um, I just attached that to the roof. If you don't have one of these little things you can just use a hook, just screw that right in and attach the string to the cup. And uh, yeah, go ahead and record your, your movie clip. So now we're in Blender, we can go ahead and switch this from the 3D view to the movie clip editor. And then go ahead and load in your movie clip. So I want to choose a different start frame, so I'm going to scroll through here and find the start frame I want. And then press S on the keyboard when I find it. So I'll press S. And then same thing for the end frame, just going to find the end frame. And then press E. Sit around. Yeah, here should be fine. Press E on the keyboard. Okay, you can just press set start frames, or set scene frames. But also make sure you prefetch your movie clip as well. If you've not, if it doesn't prefetch all the way, make sure you go to your settings and go to go to your cache settings and increase your cache limit. Since we do have nothing to track, we're going to have to do this by hand. We're going to have to do it manually. So let's switch this to masking mode. Add in a new mask, and we can name this wire removal. I try and name that properly. Okay, so again, we're going to have to mask. We're going to have to animate this mask manually, which is not too bad. It's just time consuming. Um, we're starting on the first frame, and if we hold Control and then click, we can create these points here for the mask. I just want to create a couple, and then one up at the top, one over here, one down here and then press Alt-C to close the mask. Okay, so this is the mask and we don't want it to be too close to the cup since we're going to add some feathering to it. So this around about here should be fine. Let's press T and N to get rid of the sidebars. So, um, so open up a new window, change it to the node editor. This is going to help us align the mask, make sure we're not messing it up. Um, change it to scene, use nodes and backdrop as usual and then tidy up as usual, <laughs> delete this one shift A, input movie clip and so we can go ahead and choose the movie clip we've been working with and then plug that in and add a viewer node So normally when you do something like this, you might just create a screenshot and then just track it in. So like a clean back plate, just uh, track it in. But this is not going to work. You see the video footage, it gets brighter and darker, so it's going to cause some trouble. Shift A, go to color and mix. and just plug these in and then plug this in again so it's just mixing it with itself and then if we shift A go to transform and this is just to move it around we're going to be moving this on the X so set that back to zero for now so yeah the way where this works is we're mixing it with itself but it's not going to be in the same place so if we just shift A add in an input then mask. It's easier to show you than it is to explain. Um, let's select the mask, wire removal, plug this into the factor. Okay so now we see when we start to move this on the X that string will just disappear. And it might be hard to see on the uh, on the YouTube video since it's compressed but um, let me, I'll try and zoom in, press N just zoom in. So you can see that the uh, the wire moves. Uh, 
So I'm going to shift A, add in a filter, dilate erode node. This is just going to soften the mask since it's quite sharp right now. Change this to feather. And then I'm going to increase this to something that looks good. Around there should be fine for now. So let's just see what it's doing. If we isolate this, we see that the mask is just feathered a little bit. And we can see that the wire is completely removed. So again, just keep moving on the X and the Y just to get rid of it completely. And um, we've got some feather on it as well. So essentially all we need to do now is, uh, is literally just animate the mask, which is very easy to do. And you've probably already animated masks before. Um, but if not, I'll just quickly explain how to do it. So again, we don't want we want to make sure we don't go too far down because of the feathering, and we can use this side, this uh, the right side as a guide, so we don't go too far down. So you just want to align these for now. Just put it in the starting position. Nice, something like that should be good. There's quite a few uh, frames we're going to have to manually animate this, so it can take some time. I'll probably speed this ahead, um, but if you're animating it yourself, just take time and, and keep going. So now we press this red button down here, this activate this uh, automatic keyframes. So A to select everything and G, then right click, so we set the first keyframe. And if we press right on the um, keyboard, right arrow on the keyboard, we jump ahead of frame. And now we just align this these points to somewhere that looks good. And again, you want to keep checking to the right hand side, make sure that the uh, the effect is working. And just keep jumping ahead of frame and moving the mask around. Make sure the, the wire doesn't creep back in. And this part can be uh, time consuming, it can be a pain. I know what it's like to sit here for about 30 minutes. So now that your masking is done, you might want to do some more refinement. You see um, there's a little bit still showing on the handle. So I would go ahead and maybe add in a new mask. If I had more time or I was working for a client, I'd probably add in a new mask like this. Called, maybe call it refinement. Just again add a new mask. Maybe not that one. <laughs> Alt C, close the mask. So yeah, probably create a new mask and then again just mix it in like we did the last one and get rid of it again. So it depends on how much time you have and how much effort you want to put into it. Um, I'd go ahead and add some more masks and yeah, make it look a little bit better. But for now I think this example works well. So the next thing is just to render it out, make sure you set the correct frame rates. Also make sure your resolution is correct, the same as your video footage and it's at 100% as well, otherwise the masks sometimes don't work. Choose your file format as well, I'm going to use H.264. And yeah, you can go ahead and animate. So I know this tutorial was short, but hopefully it helped. If it did, be sure to give it a like. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, see you next time.